and welcome everybody. I appreciate you being here. Of course, Chattanooga Ed, buddy, thanks for hanging out with us again on another Saturday Night Fever. Love doing it. I hope you had a great Christmas along with everybody else hanging out in the chat. <clears throat> I did. Have I did? I had a great Christmas. The kids had fun and we had snow, so that's always awesome. Um, we don't usually have snow on Christmas here, so they thoroughly enjoyed that. We went out and played in the snow and, you know, all that fun stuff. So this was the most snow I've had in Tennessee since I've lived here. We had about a little, a little under an inch, maybe. And we had, we had zero percent chance of it coming. So right. <laughs> that was fun. We had a little over four inches of snow. We had a, a really, really good snow. Unfortunately, it wasn't the um, the compactable snow where you can just make a ball and then roll it to make big snowballs. It was the kind of break apart snow, but the kids still had fun with it. But I'm going to go through and say some hellos. Uh, we've got mainly about a secret history living in your aquarium. I've got snacks 13 S, Justin Powers, Isabel, say Chasse. Is that how that's pronounced? Uh, William Pride, more select, pet punchy paints. Uh, Mr. Fish, sir, if you're here, I've missed him a couple times. <laughs> so just in case, Mr. Fish, sir, hello. Um, let's see here, Sean Chadwick, Zip Gun, Michael Machos, Dan Slee, Susan for SLC Aquatics, Fuggin' Fish, Foxy's Fish, Rico Stan. Let me show that. I don't know why that got hidden. Mrs. Fever rejoined. She had to get her stickers back, her emojis. Thank you for that, Mrs. Fever, becoming a member again. Uh, Sherry Kramer, Hello. Everybody, welcome. I appreciate you being here, and I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. If you got any fishy-related stuff, feel free to throw that in the chat. Let us know what you got. As most of you all have probably noticed, we did not set a topic for tonight's live stream because we've not gotten to interact with you all quite as much as I'd like to. Um, you know, things have gotten busy lately on the live stream, and so it seems like we haven't really gotten to everybody or all the questions. So we wanted to kind of leave the open again this week on Saturday to answer questions and talk to you all and just kind of see how everything's going in the fish fam world. I hope it is well with you. Uh, Rico is watching a movie. Rico Stan, it was a, a real treat having you on. I had a blast hanging out with you and Ed Christmas Eve. Those were a couple of fun streams. Anybody that missed that, uh, Rico was on the Thursday stream, both my channel and Ed's channel. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, he is a super cool guy. He really is. So, Ed, have you come up with any uh, any new calendar events for the uh, 2021 fish well, organization? I do, and it was sent to me. Oh, boy, I should have wrote down who. Uh, I think it was. It wasn't Rockford. It was a brand new sub to my channel, and his name was Rock something, and I apologize. Uh, I wonder if he's from St. Louis because he knew about the ACA being there. But he also knew about the AKA, the mm -hmm. the uh, so the Killies Association or Killies Convention. So maybe they have it every year in St. Louis, but uh, they have a super good club in St. Louis, the Killie Club. So, uh, but that's July 19 through the 20. So it's actually that same week. It, well, it's a couple days before the ACA. Nice, awesome. So, yeah, if you're vacationing and want a good place to go, you could, I don't know, a good place to go. But if you're looking for a place to go, you could go to St. Louis, hit the Keeleys for the first two days. And then for the three days in between, you could go to Six Flags, the Arch, and the zoo. The zoo is amazing. It's free in St. Louis. It's the second best zoo in the United States, third best in the world. Oh, it wow. is, yeah, it is super good. And it's free. So it's it's just super cool. And I've heard from you that they uh, serve adult beverages in that zoo. They did. Well, part of the reason why things are free is because Budweiser, yeah, Budweiser, I think, has a lot of the exhibits or have paid for a lot of them. So, yeah, you can get a beer and walk around. Is it a Bud? <laughs> and, uh, but you can also, that's another great tour in St. Louis. Is you can just, uh, check out the, the Budweiser like brewery. It's a free deal and afterward after you're done they let you have a sample of a bunch of the beers and it's pretty cool if you're over 21. Uh, they also own a place called Grant's Farm and that's where the Clydesdales live and so you can go see the Budweiser Clydesdales and they've got like elk and moose and other neat things and they got a great 
petting zoo where the goats will eat your children's hats and stuff. <laughs> so. Oh, it sounds like a fun time. So John yeah. Cox says the uh, AK does move around. Oh, okay. So this would be a great opportunity if you're in the St. Louis area to uh, catch it while it's in town. And Fish Tank Barn says the ALA is uh, supposed to be in Detroit in April 2021. Good to see you, Mike, Fish Tank Barn. I hope you're doing well. I hope the family had a wonderful Christmas, my friend. Yeah, I'd like to write that down. That's so, the one I really want to go to. <laughs> Ed, I'm going to forward this question straight to you. Uh, Justin Powers says, what is an easy way to tell, uh, easy telltale sign or thing to watch for when a guppy or molly is about ready to give birth to her fry? Uh, well, it's easier to tell with a guppy because their bodies, you know, they'll be round. You'll see the gravid spot is, I should have a little fish or something. Well, just just pull the, one out of the tank and hold it. Yeah. In the, <laughs> <laughs> the gravid spot. Boy. Okay, we'll use a Corridora. The gravid spot is oh gosh, right here at the back of the tail, and it'll look like about a black pea. And when she starts to square off, she, you'll see that she's real round, but she'll actually get so full of her babies will get so big. Her little round body will actually start to, like, see my hands here? Will actually do this. So she's almost a little square. And then you know she's about to pop. Now with mollies, it's a lot harder because they're a little bigger fish. And uh, it, and you can't see the gravid spot as well either. So basically, well, I'm trying to remember if, uh, I think mollies are a 60-day uh for birth so the best thing to do would be kind of maybe try to watch the last time she had babies and wait about 62 days and she'll be having them again if that helps at all but i mean you'll see that she gets huge but yep. she, doesn't, she won't get as square as the guppy right i did pull that up just so people could kind of see that gravid spot you were talking about um but yeah it's definitely <clears throat> Once you get accustomed to doing it, it, it becomes pretty easy to tell within a couple of days of when those guppies are going to start dropping fry. You know, you, you just kind of get in the hang of it. If you've had them, you look and you go, oh, that one's ready to pop. Oh, that one's not quite. Sometimes you get a female that only gives off about two or three babies, and they'll just never get big. And uh, they're, the, they're the tricks. It's yeah. the ones that don't drop a couple. But if they drop like 10 or more, they're going to get square. Absolutely. Hope hey, Reyes. Hello. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the same method I use is looking at the gravid spot. And then when they get boxy or squared out on the belly uh, with the guppies, like you mentioned with the mollies. And also John Cox says, guppies easy, mollies platies not so easy. A female guppy bent area turns dark and their skin slash scales are thin so you can see easily. Um. Yeah, the the guppies, you know, like I said, once you've seen it a couple of times, you pretty much get used to it. You know, um, especially if you're somebody that pulls your your females or puts them into uh, breeder boxes or things. So you're constantly watching for that to make sure that you can save the fry. You get accustomed to it. Mainly Bettis yep. uh, says, once my mama guppies are on the verge of birthing, they stop swimming and hide up in the guppy grass slash hornwort. Uh, she'll hover in that spot breathing rapidly. Yep, absolutely. It's another awesome sign. Let you know she's getting ready to start dropping babies. Now, now, Susan said that the guppies have birth every 25 to 35 days. Mm -hmm. I was saying 60 days was for mollies. Yep. Anyway, and I have seen that too, where she mentioned uh, them sitting on the bottom. I've seen both. I've seen some that sit on the bottom um, and do the rapid breathing, and then some that hide up in the plants at the top and do the rapid breathing. So yeah, I felt horrible. One of the females in this tank, she was busting, and she well, she was literally giving birth, and I didn't realize it, but she was sideways at the top, and I thought I had a dead fish. I was like, oh, oh man, a big mother died, and I went and grabbed her, and she was alive. And there was a baby in my hand also. It was like, holy cow. Sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> put her back in. She probably popped that one out in fear. <laughs> Poor thing. Right. She's still alive. 
Well, and it so, is definitely a common occurrence to uh, lose females, you know, during birth or right after, point. sometimes right before, um, unfortunately. John Cox says guppies can go longer uh, between drops, but very rare to be on the 25 day mark. Yeah, <clears throat> they can, they can vary it. Of course, a lot of it depends on conditions and things around them. Uh, but guppies are one of those awesome fish that, once they, once they get um, inseminated, you know, they can pop out babies for a while, even if you've removed them from the males, as most of the people in this chat already know. Um, yep. So it's always always fun. I've had, you know, people that they don't know that, and then they move the guppy, and she keeps having babies, and there's no males around. <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. Yep. Uh, Justin says, my mollies are blue mollies, so it feels uh, even harder to tell, LOL. Yeah, I can only imagine with the balloon mollies trying to figure out um, exactly when they're going to drop, because those things always look fat-bellied. Yeah, I've never had balloon mollies, so they do always look pregnant. <laughs> I wonder if they have less babies, because there's less room. Maybe that's crazy. I don't know. Um, Brian is asking if I can send her address to you so that you can get some more stickers to her. I sent her the last four of yours that I had. So just remind me, Ed, and I will send that out to you. And again, everybody that uh, messaged me yesterday, Merry Christmas to you all. I do appreciate it. I kind of avoided social media on Christmas. That's kind of always been the one day, even when I worked retail and every other holiday got skipped and I was always having to work. I always had Christmas. It was kind of like a, a no fly zone for anything, but Christmas. So I appreciate you all. And I will get back to you. Um, I, will, <clears throat> I will not be sending out any stickers for a little bit because aquarium cop has asked me to send his stickers along with mine uh, because he's like right now he's about to retire and he's going to be moving to a different state. So uh, he just asked if I could do that for him right now while he doesn't know his address. I said, no problem. That is awesome. Big Tank Hank, how's it going? Good to see you, my friend. Hope you're doing well. <clears throat> I'm going to get something pulled up here real quick because I would like to go do something. We've got 71 people in here right now. 37 thumbs ups. I appreciate you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out with us. Feel free to throw those uh, questions in the chat. Get this pulled up here. We've got a friend of ours who's got a birthday stream going, and I'd like to do a little raid on him, tell him happy birthday from all of us. Uh, Mike's Aquatics and Things, dropping that $1 fertilizer on the chat, Mike. I appreciate that. I hope you're doing well. I don't have any party poppers, as I mentioned, with the, uh, the snow and ice. Uh, moved in Christmas Eve, and then it's still kind of icy outside, so did not go to the store, but I... I Oh, yeah, party popper too, Mike. Thank you for that. I um, appreciate you keeping the plants growing in the chat. Michael Macho says, any ideas on keeping German blue rams? So I think it's a great idea. Um, of course, you want warmer temperatures. Um, I, haven't, I haven't kept them personally. I've looked into keeping them. Um, they're beautiful fish. Every time I see them in the store, I'm like, ooh, I want those. And I'm like... I don't have anything set up for them. Do I want to take away from another tank I could set up for guppies or inlers or plecos? Um, they're gorgeous fish. Man, I am so in the same boat as you. I would love to have some rams. I've got a buddy in Salt Lake City who raises them, and they are so pretty. And uh, he, I, I'm not for sure if he has Bolivian or uh, German, but they're awesome. I, just, I love how they look. I love the cute little bodies and their the blue that just sparkles off them is amazing. Absolutely. Uh, if you've got anything specific that you're looking for, Michael, let us know and we can, can get you that information. Oddball Aquatics, what's going on, Haley? Good to see you. Hey, Another awesome fishy person we got to meet this past year. Um, looking forward to hopefully meeting some more people and getting to see some people again that we ran into. Of course, Haley was kind enough to let us come over to her house with uh, Sean Peck and check out her tanks. Well, Sean got some video there and we actually did a live stream from her house. That was fun. Um, yeah, super smart. I wish I was half as smart as Haley. Yeah. And 
hopefully she can get those uh, rope fish of breeding sometime soon. I know that she's like all out trying to get that going. Maybe just in 10 more years. Yeah, just, just 10 <laughs> more years, Haley. You just could keep at it. Uh, let me see here. Oh, I'm going to grab the link real quick. I would like to ask you all to do me the favor. Popping in and saying hi to this guy. Tell him happy birthday. We'll still be here. You can come right back if you like. And knowing Griffin, he will probably be on after we leave. So if that's the case, we'll drop a link then. But let me do this real quick. Yeah, I am. Um, it's, it's been really weird because we were seeing, you know, we were going and meeting so many people so often. That's cool. I like that. My, my mom made this for me. She she really she knows that I love fish, but for some year reason, it's really transforms to her as crabs because she gave me a crab painting last year and. uh then she made this awesome crab that she uh, found a design out of a newspaper. It was like, I think it was uh, one of those, not crossword puzzles, but mazes. And then she just kind of put it together for a crab. But isn't that neat that my mom did that for That's me? That's very cool. I like that. She's a crafty lady. I see where you get it from. Yeah. Her mom was amazing. My grandma... She made wedding dresses and stuff. She did a ton of the super hand work. <clears throat> Haley said, we're welcome to come over anytime. Just tell Sean no jumping, LOL. Yeah, he was, <laughs> was kind of bouncing around at one point. And the, the stand's doing this number. And I'm like, yep, same at my house. I'm like, no, no jumping, kids. Stop. No. <laughs> Sean, Sean Peck is an awesome guy, though. Hey, Peter from the Mod Guppies here. What's going on, buddy? I hope you're doing well, Peter. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Happy holidays. Yeah, I did get that link. Good, good, good. All right, see. I knew I shouldn't have, not that I shouldn't have left it open, but I knew that on a stream specifically devoted to Q&A, we wouldn't have that much Q&A, as opposed to if it's got a topic, we have more Q&A than I can get to. So... <clears throat> we're gonna have to add some filler in here, Ed. We're gonna have to figure out a topic real quick. Well, there's Velasky. How are you doing today, Velasky? And now let's just wait five minutes to see what he says. Yeah, five minutes. All right. <laughs> well, yeah. Foxy Fish is here. Oh, I guess Anakin's here too. I saw that she's saying hi to him. But I put out a song, an embarrassing song. <laughs> the Father Fish and it took me a while to get it to him. I wasn't, I guess, able to get it to him before Christmas, but I guess he got it today. And so uh, I'm going to have to go and check out Father Fish, his uh, live stream today to see how he reacted to my song. <laughs> and I won't sing it right now because y'all don't want to see me turn <laughs> five made <of> red. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go check that out. Uh, I have been uh, fortunate enough to you know, get a preview of Ed singing quite a few times in the car. So, uh, it's so much harder with no music. Yeah. You know, I want, I had plans to do this with a piano at my sister's house and it just time got away. And I haven't been to my sister's house in forever for a couple, well, since maybe Thanksgiving or something and didn't get it done. And so I had to just do it, uh, <laughs> with no music and, I did it. I had, I sang it like 11 times until I got it right. <laughs> what was funny is I put a father fish, I put my father fish magnet in the Christmas tree and uh, they, my mom noticed that father fish was in the Christmas tree yesterday when we we're opening gifts. <laughs> is that Santa Claus like, in the tree? Yeah. You, no, my mom likes father fish. She thinks yeah. he's pretty funny. Father you fish know, is awesome. Out of all the YouTubers that she's heard, or listens to, I think Father Fish is the only one she'll let. She's not. She doesn't even listen to our stuff, but that's, she'll, that's, she'll that's, listens to Father Fish. <laughs> oh, that's great! <clears throat> so William Pride Morse says, "Fish and Fever." How old are Plecos before the before they rehome them? Before I rehome them? Before I sell them? 
Um, so I don't always go on H necessarily because I have multiple batches will go in the same tank. So once they're ready to leave the cave, um, the way I do mine is usually I'll go ahead and pull the cave and get the babies out and put dad back with the cave in his tank. Uh, and then I have different grow out tanks for different lines of plecos. So I don't have a definite age and I go often by size, which is something that I don't do in any other aspect of them. So people say, well, how big do they have to be before they breed? And I go, well, it's not the size, it's the age. Um, so I don't, I don't really look at the age on them before rehoming or shipping them out. I go by the size because I know once they hit a certain size, they can handle shipping. Um, you know, they can handle the process of going through the um, fasting. Wow, I lost the word there uh, and all that stuff. So how do you fast a pleco? Because they're always sucking on stuff. They are. Um, and that is one of the many things that I use the aquarium co-op lease specimen containers for. Pretty smart. I'll either use those or where I've taken the extreme containers and I've made the breeder boxes out of them. Of course, I have some other breeder boxes, but um, it just depends on how many fish I need to get in there. Um, but yeah, I'll get them in one of those two or the marina hang on breeder boxes and fast them that way. Because yeah, you're right. They, they will constantly be munching on stuff if there's anything to be had. I'm going to... From Mexico City is saying hi. Feliz Navidad. I hope I said that right. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I only know a little Spanish. I know enough to get me in trouble and uh, too much to say on the stream. <laughs> so yeah, if I question. say too much, I'll look like a bendeja. Bendejo. <laughs> oh. I just said a retarded girl on accident. <laughs> Sorry, so I'm going to probably mispronounce your name, uh, but Lorea99 says, how often should I feed spirulina to guppies? Excuse me? How often should you feed spirulina to guppies? Well, as long as they're eating it. <laughs> uh, I mean, you want some high protein stuff in there too, but there's, they like to eat that too. So uh, like James, uh, Got me hooked on this stuff, or maybe it's Bob. I don't know which one of you guys did, but it's uh, spirulina packed frozen shrimp and mm -hmm. brain shrimp. And I've been feeding that once a week to my my uh, guppies. So that way they just have a little bit something other than protein. Absolutely. A couple of times a week I've found is fine, um, either via the spirulina brain shrimp, like you mentioned, or uh, spirulina flakes. Uh, I don't make it a quote unquote main staple of their diet. Um, a couple of times a week, no problem. Through here, ta da da. Brian Farrell says, White fish can breed quickly and live at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm. Wait, say that again? What fish can breed quickly and live at 70 degrees Fahrenheit? Rice fish. There you go. That's a good one. I should have come up with that. Yeah, because because uh, guppies could live at seventy, but they're not going to breed quickly at seventy. Um, you know, rice fish is a perfect one, and I've still got <clears throat> your half of these rice fish over here, Ed. Whenever uh, you oh. get a tank set up for them, well, they, they may have dropped some eggs by then. Well, that'd be awesome. I mean, I it'd be I and I you get to keep all the babies. Oh well, thank you, buddy. Yep. Yeah, uh, no, rice fish are an awesome fish, and I would definitely oh. encourage you, if you have not had them, uh, give them a shot. And there are a couple different, you know, varieties out there, of course, so take a look at what's available and which ones you like and, and go for it. I knew my oh. camera was going to do that. White Clouds is a great one, too. That's a really good one. Yep, we're on this camera. Now we're on this camera. Now we're back. All right. Fancy. Tech, tech support bounce around here. Uh, Christine Gauthier says, I have a question. A friend can't get a tank to cycle over three months, has a garami in there, and just got a goldfish. Reasons for not cycling after three months, 40-gallon hex. I feel like this is the friend we've talked about before. I know we had somebody else who had a, a friend or a neighbor that <clears throat> their tank was going on many months of not cycling. 
Um, first off, I would very kindly and politely tell them uh, not to add any more fish, especially not goldfish, until you get that tank cycled. Um, I would strongly and stop recommend cleaning it. it. That's why it's not cycling. If you clean it, it's you're killing the bacteria. Yeah, I, I, I mean, ninety percent of these are because the person that's new in the hobby refuses to let the rock sit in there and not be cleaned. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, you're fine. That's that's the most common reason. When it takes that long to cycle a tank, it's because somebody is scrubbing all that beneficial bacteria out of there on a regular basis. Um, I mean, realistically, in three months, there's no reason a tank shouldn't be cycled. You have to do a lot of work to keep it from being cycled if you've had it sitting for three months. You know, yeah, that's just my two cents on it. Um, really, I don't, I don't know of a lot of other reasons that one would not cycle after three months. Unless you're just continuously upping the low, which I know you mentioned just got a goldfish, but if the only other thing in there is a garami, um, I mean, that's just, that's really weird if it's not cycled. The other thing I'm going to say is, I have seen this happen before. If there's just one fish in there and a 40 gallon hex, well now two, goldfish and garami. Um, oftentimes people that are new to the hobby have issues with improperly using the master test kits. Um, you know, they get too many drops or the drops are not even, they get, bad readings or they can't read it correctly and this is not necessarily what's happening with you but i've seen it before uh or not with you but with um your friend so that could be another thing um other issues include changes in the water source you know i've seen that happen as well uh where the whatever water source you're using to fill that tank and do water changes um, you know, you can get different readings coming out of the tap at different times. So maybe test the tap and see, give yourself a baseline, uh, make sure that nothing's changing there. Um, if you're having a lot of issues, Priscilla MK with the $5 super chat. Thank you. Priscilla says, sing Ed. Ha. It's a no, that's okay. Thank you, Priscilla. I appreciate that. <laughs> Looking forward to hanging out with you tomorrow on the Fish Art Stream. You'll have to make sure and let me know if it's going to be scheduled earlier or later or at the normal time. Just let me know ahead of time so that I can be sure to set up appropriately. You sent him the five bucks, not me. Right. <laughs> you don't tip the, the guy over here and expect this guy to <laughs> sing you a song. <laughs> What's going on, man? <laughs> Speaking of which, Ed is almost, almost to 800 subscribers. And I would say if you haven't checked out Chattanooga Ed's channel, somehow you're hanging out here, do me a favor, subscribe to Chattanooga Ed. He's an awesome guy. We'd love to get him to 1,000 subscribers. That way he can uh, start doing mobile live streams. I am almost to 775. I need one person to 775, and that's like one of my favorite numbers. Nice. Kind of cool. Nice. Yeah, 75 is my old football number. All right, let me bounce up here. Oh, chat jumped on me. It started moving. It went from um, very calm and casual to picking up speed. I appreciate that. Uh, PA Fish Preacher says, I have ick issue. Anyone ever use Ruby Reef? I have not used Ruby Reef. Have you, Ed? I have not. I use ick -X. Um The other thing, of course, being salt and increasing the temperature. But ick -X is, is kind of my go-to. Is Ruby, is that for saltwater? I would assume so, given that it says reef, but there are actually several crossover things, treatments. Okay. Um, I I just, the ick that might get on saltwater might be a little different than what's on freshwater. I know that they have like black ick, even. So. Ruby reef kick ick. Yeah, I have not tried the kick ick. Heard of it, not tried it. Um. Like I said, I, I, I use Ickex, um, and that's kind of my go-to. So mm -hmm. I can, can speak to that one, but I can't speak to the Ruby Reef. Neither for nor against. Uh, Zen Ginger says, you should start giving a topic and do Q&A on that topic. Sometimes people just think of additional stuff once it's mentioned. Now, absolutely. Every once in a while, we just kind of like to open it up and hang out and see what's going on. 
Priscilla, you're going to have to get him to, to sing when you come hang out in Tennessee, you know, in February. Timothy well, Darling says hi. Everyone. There you go. We'll get into a karaoke bar. Uh, Timothy Darling, hello, says hi. I'm, I am new to the chat. Welcome, Timothy. Glad to have you here. Welcome to the Fish Fam chat. Hope you're enjoying the hangout. Uh, oh, God. Mike's asking, how do you make a Kleenex dance? You put a little boogie in it. Oh, gosh, that's terrible. Sandy Rimmiger says, uh, my Oscar has a pimple on his head. Any guesses? Um, <clears throat> on his head, Oscar? I'm not entirely sure. Generally, oh. I see him on the chin. You see the, the chimples, as I call them. Um, and that's where their face is rubbing on the tank because they don't really have enough room. Uh, but one on the head, I've not experienced before. It it could be that it banged its head real hard against the glass or something yep. like that. One of my uh, geophagus, and they hardly have a head. I mean, they're so. But uh, still, one of them had a big old bust on his head. I don't know if he hit the glass real hard or a piece of driftwood, but he looked like he had something. But it's it's healed up, and he's fine now. Yeah, um, a hole in the bit, head about to become a hole. I've I've never seen it convert from a like a pimple bump to hole in the head. Not that it's not possible, um, but I've not seen it. Um, I do think you're definitely right. And Oscars are one of those fish that they can definitely get a little rowdy, especially if you've got some decor in there for them to bump into, or even hitting the glass or the lid. Um, they're just a, a feisty fish, and sometimes they get a little carried away. So well, I, Rob, my fish store owner, he says it doesn't sound like hole in the head either. So Perfect. I've never had a hole in the head. So. I've just got the ones I was born with. So <laughs> John McKenzie, thank you for uh, the $1 fertilizer on the stream, along with Priscilla MK and Fishy Mon. I appreciate all of you all throwing those $1 piles of fertilizer in there. Sorry, I don't have any party poppers. I'll have to write you an IOU. Uh, this ice is supposed to be going away tonight, so I can get back out there, but. Um, high horsepower rear wheel drive vehicle and ice don't really go together too well. So I just have been avoiding going. His car um, is a muscle car. It's cool. Well, it's thank you, go. buddy. All right. Let me get down to here real quick. Um, try not to miss some of the non highlighted ones because I think we had a couple pop through that did not say my name. Uh, Ryan Melling says extreme krill or extreme community cray for a 75 gallon heavily planted community tank, which is best staple flake diet. So I use both. Um, I vary mine. That being said, I tend to quote unquote overfeed my tanks. Um, if you're only going to go with one, I personally would go with the community crave. Um, I love the krill. I've got, well, I don't have the krill here. I've got the community crave here. The krill's in the other room. And then the nice pellets, um, you mentioned a community tank. If they're bigger fish, so like take behind me these angels, um, they absolutely love these. They're the 1.5 millimeter slow sinking. Um, I feed that to a lot of my community fish that are big enough to take it. But between just the two that you mentioned, if I had to pick one of them, I would say go with that community crave. It gives a little more variety than just a krill flake as a staple flake for the diet. It, can I mention something? Yes, sir. Why go with just one? You can go with two, and then it'll last twice as long. You can. You absolutely so can. That way you're varying up their diet a little, you know, by yep. doing one every other day, you know? Absolutely. Um, no, I don't disagree with that at all. But if, if you're looking at, I guess, the cost maybe of, I'm not, I'm not throwing, throwing the money yeah. at both of them. Um, I, I understand that. I definitely would go with the community crave specifically for variety, like you mentioned, because it's got more than just the krill. Um, you know, it's got several different types of flake in there and different, add, not additives. I hate to use that word because that always sounds bad when you use the word additives in uh, reference to food, but um, several different ingredients. Brianne Farrell says, forgot to add this. Uh, what fish will breed somewhat quick, live at 70 degrees, and no filter, or frequent water changes, potential bubbler? Are you sticking with your rice fish answer? Yeah. I'm just okay. I, I figured you <laughs> would. Yeah. Or the white clouds. I think white clouds is a great one too. Absolutely. Let me see. I missed something about shrimp. Correct answer is shrimp. 
Where? What did I miss? What did I miss? Oh, to put in the seven. The correct answer for the fish to put in there would be shrimp. Like instead of fish, put shrimp in there. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Because they do such a good job. Yeah. Cleaning and everything else. Yeah. But we're gonna say we're gonna we're gonna say fowl and say you should have said crustacean or invertebrate or something. Because as much as we love our shrimps, they're not fish. So even my mom knows I love fish, but she gives me crabs. <laughs> <laughs> the Zen Ginger with an interesting point here says, I found driftwood can break a cycle and keep it from fixing itself as the wood decomposes. That is interesting. Um, that's a very good point. I've not had that issue before. Um, but no, that makes sense. And that would be one of those things if that friend with the, the non-cycling tank is having issues and they've got driftwood in there, maybe have them pull it out until you can get that cycle locked in. Uh, oh, yeah, Christine says, this tank of his doesn't grow a thing. Even when I tell him to let things sit, he's not touching things and still nothing grows. <clears throat> I mean, I'm at that point, I, I really feel like this is the, the tank that I've seen in question before. Um, check your water source and make sure things are being dechlorinated. But it almost seems like there's got to be some sort of toxin in the tank that's but how's the, fish? the garami? Yeah, I'm, I don't know what. Yeah. I, there are definitely things that could affect bacteria, smaller organisms, smaller plant life, um, and not take out, you know, a fish. Um, but you get into so many tangents and variables that it's almost one of those things if you've spent that much time in it. Um, I'm probably going to break it down because I mean, if you're, if you're letting it sit and you're not touching it, you're not pulling the bacteria, it's still not growing um, any type of plants. It's not cycling. I'm probably going to break that thing down, do a full cleaning of everything in the tank, um, basically nuke it and start over, uh, you know, make sure that there's no type of substances or residues or anything that's gotten in the tank. Uh, make sure the substrate's clean and start fresh. You're not going to mess up your cycle because you don't have a cycle. So that would be kind of like my my final go-to. Uh, if, if he's not pulling the bacteria out, I have to assume that something is preventing it from growing. Um, same thing with the plant life. So I would probably start anew, especially after months and months. I had to take a shot, a screenshot because Priscilla said Ed is a hundred percent right. Now some other Ed here. <laughs> She'll never say that again. No. I don't think she will. So I had to take a screenshot. And you know what? I think it's Rocking Fish. That's the new guy that I was talking about earlier, telling me awesome. about the the Achilles. And also hi there to I hate fish or not, I don't hate fish people. I hate stupid people. <laughs> this would be the wrong place to be yeah. if you hated fish people. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. So uh, TJ Autocross says any experience breeding Parasipochromus from Lake Tanganyika, Tanganyika, whatever. I'm not speaking properly today. Uh, wondering if you can leave the fry in with adults without them being eaten. So I'm not a huge cichlid guy. I know we've got Kenny E from Danikin Aquatics. <clears throat> and we did have Mrs. Fever in here, um, who's real big on the African cichlids. Um, Several other people in here, of course. I don't mean to leave anybody out. Um, but those are just the first two that come to mind that are probably sitting there going, well, I know the answer to this. Um, so if either of you or anyone for that matter would like to give a good answer for that, please feel free to. I have my thoughts and assumptions on it. Um, but given that I have not personally done it, I would hate to give you misguided information. Um, and I guess that's the best way to phrase that. Get I got a question for you. I am a rocking and a rolling. Um, stocking ideas for a two-gallon hexagon shrimp. That's, that's the only only one I'm going to give you a shrimp. There's not really any fish I'm going to recommend you put in there. 
uh pew fish so i do like that answer and i had considered that pew was answering regarding the 70 degree question uh says goldfish one hatch of eggs hundreds of fish haha -ha. yeah um i considered <laughs> that but i i was sticking more with the breeding quickly versus large spawn um but no i don't disagree there at all pew that's a good answer hey furless aquatics how's it going brianne farrell says what fish do you breed in selfish room fever how profitable are discus to breed how profitable are bettas and how profitable do you think clowns would be so that's a lot of good questions that is a lot of good questions i'm going to wrap them all up into kind of a condensed answer here i do mostly guppies endlers and plecos that is what i'm generally breeding in terms of discus bettas clowns and really any fish a lot of it is going to depend on your setup um, and your area what's the market like uh, for some people it's very profitable for them to breed angelfish where i'm at there are quite a few people that are already doing that <clears throat> that are already supplying local fish stores that you know you see on craigslist all the time um, people are breeding out angelfish here and then they're like, Hey, we've got this, all these spawns of angelfish. You want to come get some for, you know, two bucks a piece. Um, so I already know the market is oversaturated where I'm at with angelfish. And that's definitely but something to look into. If you're in St. Louis, for some reason, nobody breeds them. Yeah. So it would be great if you did it in St. Louis. Absolutely. Um, and it varies honestly for my area. Um, if it weren't, for like YouTube and all that kind of stuff. Other than just the fun of it and enjoying it, uh, there would not be any business sense or profitability like you're talking about in breeding guppies and endlers just because the local fish stores don't really go for the the pure strains, if you will. You know, they're, they're more for the fancy guppies. Um, they don't necessarily have the setups and the room and the time. Um, and a lot of people that just walk into a LFS aren't looking for the fancy strains. You know, they're not going to understand why that pair of fish is marked at whatever price you've got on that particular strain of guppy. Um, you know, if they walk in and see $40 for a pair of guppies on some blue Arctic volcanoes. They're not going to understand why that guppy is marked at that, you know, the genetics, the background, how hard it is to, you know, really get a, a solid good line of those. So it, really it depends on where you're at um, and what, what breeds well for you and your setups. I know that's generalized guidance, but that's really the best guidance I can give um, because you could, you could be profitable with discus. You could also lose your backside trying to do it. And, you know, you get overrun or you're losing money or you're putting money in the setups and it's just not working for you. Yeah. I think you also have to look at the population that you're supplying. So if you live like, let's say, in a little bitty town, I don't, I don't know, I'm trying to think, Salina, Kansas, smaller town, you may not be able to sell a lot of discus there. Even, you know, like Rob, my fish store guy at Aquatic Aesthetics, he says he loves buying fish from people. And I just bought uh, a half moon betta from him last week that was locally bred. So, you know, the, but the thing is, is if you're trying to sell discus, you need a population to sell it too. Absolutely. Um, and, and another thing, and this is the last one I'll touch on with that. And I'll jump down to the next. <clears throat> Sorry to jump back. But another thing with discus, um, a lot of times the fish stores, and I've heard this talked about before, is they go, oh, great. I'll take, you know, 10 of the, what, what's it, Marlboro Red, whatever the, you know, the red, we'll insert line here. Um, and then they, they have good. those. And then they want blue next time so are you set up to do okay i'm going just gonna breed the heck out of these this same line of red discus constantly um and then you kind of get into a saturation thing um whereas okay now they want the blues or whatever other line there is i've heard that talked about before going back up here i do want to point out a secret history living in your aquarium um, had an awesome answer in terms of the fish you can keep without the heater and the where is it? Um, I can't find it again, but thank you, Alex, for that. He had, I think, about 12 or 15 different uh, ideas for what to keep with no heater and no filter. Uh, Edgar Reyes mentioned using salt every time uh, he does water changes. Is that good? 
it's not bad. Um, nothing against it. Salt is so like if you're north of the border, if you're in Canada, you've pretty much had to kind of switch over to salt as your medication. Um, and I definitely recommend that anybody that's in the hobby kind of familiarize yourself with using aquarium salt just in case push comes to shove. That's what you have to use. Um, I don't see a problem with it. Uh, I assume Edgar, you're, you know, you're around the fish fam. You're, you're familiar name. Um, if it had been causing you problems that you would have been reaching out, asking how to fix problems. Since I've never seen that coming from you, I can only assume that things are all well in the tank and I would say, carry on with it, my friend. Uh Oh, <laughs> I wonder if Mike lives in Salina, Kansas. <laughs> I should have said Mound City, Kansas. I'm sorry. <laughs> what are the odds of that? <laughs> oh, goodness. I had Geek Boys uh, joking about that, looking at how much we spend on fish and tanks and th and wonders about fish people being stupid people from your blunder on the I hate fish people slash I hate stupid people. Yeah, we, you know, it's, it's one of those hobbies that a lot of us devote a lot of money to. Um, Kenny said, missed the question. So did Vince's fever. It was about Parasipochromis and um, leaving the fry with the adults or pulling them, if I remember correctly, from Tanganyika. I would move the babies. I think they're pretty good parents from what's my past. And maybe they ate, maybe some people ate. Some people, some of the fish got their babies, but I had so many of them in that tank. It just didn't matter. You know, so. Furloughs Aquatics, I appreciate you being here. Uh, says Fish Root Fever, how is it the two awesome dudes are streaming and yet we don't have more people in here? It's a crime for sure. LOL. Hope y'all are having a great night. I, I appreciate you all. 112 people in here, 80 thumbs ups. That's awesome. That means a yeah. lot to me. And I can't thank you all enough for that. Um, especially since we didn't set it up at the topic and we just kind of are flying by the seat of our pants here tonight. Uh, Alfredo Fernandez says my water is, excuse me, has a pH of 8.5. How can I lower it if my hardness is high? I see Ed thinking. Well, he could throw in wood. Yep. That, that is, and people hate that answer because of the tannins, if you're not a tannins fan. But that is my chosen way to do it um, and the way that I recommend is get some driftwood in there. Now there's different buffers um, and I can already see Alex secret history leaving in your aquarium, getting into the chemical compositions of things that you can use. There are definitely some things out there that you can do. Just keep in mind anytime that you're using an additive with every water change. Um, I you hate want, that. Yeah. I you want, you want to try and avoid bouncing parameters and you want to try and get something that is going to give you a consistency. Um, 8.5 is up there. Don't get me wrong. Um, <clears throat> but, and I don't know what, you, what you're wanting to put in it. How about um, rainwater? Collect your own rainwater. Rainwater can be a good one. Um, you know, I've heard issues with chemicals and things in rainwater. I've used rainwater before, um, but I've also heard people make a decent argument well, to not use it. Um, and it's in Mexico City, and it's like way up in the mountains, super high. Oh, okay. yeah, I would. I don't know if the the like the smog gets mm -hmm. out of the, the valley or not. So he might get more acid rain. Yeah, I don't know um, how it works. I, I would also say though, um, and again, this is not knowing what you intend to keep in there. But a lot of things will adapt, um, even up to an 8.5, especially if you're getting them brought in locally. Um, generally speaking, they're not going to be sourcing them out and bringing them in if there's not some survivability, because if they're not surviving from the local fish stores, we'll say, um, then there's no profit for the local fish stores. So they're not going to order those fish, you know, does that make sense? Um, but again, that's not knowing exactly what you intend to keep in there. And I definitely would recommend a big old honking hunk of chunk of driftwood in there. Um, rainwater, like Ed said, is a definitely another phenomenal option. Medcal 74M 
spectrum fever. So I have a uh, Celebes and blue eyed rainbows and a quarantine tank. And I lost three in the last two weeks. Nothing looks wrong with him. The only thing I can think of is low key, low KH ideas. Sometimes fish die. Um, uh, that's a horrible answer, but I, I have had that happen. Um, I've had, you know, I've brought in fish, put them in quarantine and they looked fine and they just didn't, make it through the process. Sometimes it's the process itself um, of, you know, getting those fish captured, collected or wherever they get shipped to, you know, sometimes a trans ship or sometimes it's, you know, in country, they move into a wholesaler, they go from that wholesaler out to the store and then they go from the store to you. Um, that's definitely can be an overwhelming process for that fish. So that that's always a possibility. It may be low KH. That's, you know, I'm not saying it's not, um, but I think a lot of times we look f we we look for a reason when there may not be such a complex reason. Does that make sense? Um, you know, we get we get all our stuff out and we go to look and then we're like, I'm going to solve the the mystery, and the mystery is not as complex as a lot of times we make it out to be, and we overthink things. I think as a group, we're all oftentimes overthinkers, except for myself. I try not to think. Um, People are talking about uh, a good bottom dwelling fish for a five gallon tank. I, you could get, what are the little nano quarry cats called? The pygmy nano, quarries? Yeah, pygmy quarries, or maybe a uh, shrimp, I would say. Don't go with a full size quarry. Even three of them, that would be too big because they like to swim up and down and that'd just be tight. Uh, Angling and Aquatics says, What do you think is a good heater to run on a five gallon tank? I would just go to the store and get you a little one of the preset ones, uh, either Aquion or um, I'd go with an Aquion. I think that's what I've got on mine. And those are the ones that I, I generally get. Just pick up one of the little preset for the five gallons. You know, they're not expensive. Um, heaters is one of those things I don't recommend off of Amazon. Um, and I always recommend supporting your local fish store. So run down there and just grab one of the little presets, throw it in there, and you should be good to go. I've got one on my uh, Fluval Flex, and I love that thing. There's no tinkering with it. There's no adjusting temperatures. You put it in there, you plug it in, and it works. Yeah, I got one for my uh, little cube that... Uh, James and I both got a cube when we were at a convention not too long ago, and uh, I got the heater from Aquatic Aesthetics, and it's it's a preset 77 all the time. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, Brian says, any thoughts on breeding bettas? Um, research. Um, research, research, research. Make sure you're going to have somewhere for all those babies to go if you do breed them out. That That's another big one. Um, I know that bettas are kind of a, a hot, hot fish right now. Um, and not that they're not always popular, but right now they're kind of like super spotlighted at the moment. Um, but just make sure that if you do get in, into breeding bettas, um, that you're going to have some place for all those babies to go. I think it could be one. I, I think breeding any fish can be a wonderful experience. Um, that being said, I also enjoy the experience of, you know, nurturing the fish and getting them to breed and achieving that, Hey, you know, I've managed to, to make this fish happy enough that it's bacon babies and all that. Um, so make sure it's going to be enjoyable for you. It's going to be enjoyable for the fish and that you have somewhere for them to go. Um, and I say, go for it. Just do your research first because there's a lot of info out there. Uh, Pursue yeah. aquatics. It's got the gang, got the gang, got the gang. Make sure that you have plenty of tanks. That's that's the tough thing with the, the bettas because. Absolutely. There it is. I was looking for this. I saw the, the little thing up top there. Kenny from Aquatic Marine with the $50 super sticker. Oh, my goodness. Kenny, my friend, thank you. Um, that'll, that'll turn around and go back in your pocket because I need to come up and see you there at the store. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. That's some. That's some uh, some free fish food for me is what that turns into. Uh, but seriously, Kenny, I hope you had a Merry Christmas. I was thinking about you guys. Uh, I hope the family had, had fun, and I hope you're doing well. 
And I really do appreciate the super chat, my friend. Um, thinking about doing a, a, without giving away too much information, a stream from up there in the near future. So I'll be getting with you about that just to make sure it's a good day for you. Um, don't want to come in when you've got 47 people running power tools because I know you're constantly making um, changes and improvements. <clears throat> but I really do appreciate that, Kenny from Aquatic Marine. And anybody that doesn't know, if we've got, I know we've got some new names here. That is my local fish store owner. Um, I am blessed, fortunate enough to have a local fish store owner that not only runs an awesome store, um, but supports me and the community and does crazy awesome things like drop $50 super stickers of the little guy on the rocket. I think he did it because I always like mimic the, the sticker emojis, and I don't know how to mimic the pair riding the rocket spinning in circles. So... <laughs> but again, Kenny, thank you for that. Uh, P Fish Zone says it's a fish family thing to watch. Uh, Fishy Bone says I sound congested. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Um, this is still oh, better than he sounded in a month. <laughs> I don't sound that awful, apparently. Thanks, Ed. Um, you um, sound wonderful compared to last time. Uh, I'm looking to see what's going on here. Uh, apparently, I missed a question and it got spammed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab this while I've got it pulled up. Um, and sorry if I missed it. The chat did jump on me. I got behind. And so Brian was asking about breeding mystery snails. That one's real easy. Drop the water level down and just make sure you feed them. Feed them really well. Um, algae wafers, green beans, that kind of stuff. Um, but make sure you've got that water level down so that they can get out of water and lay that clutch of eggs because they need to do it out of the water. Do you have a video on that? I do not. I do oh, not. my gosh. D from do Down that. the Wormhole has a great video, as do several other people in here. D's um, awesome. She is. Go through here. Paul Stero says uh, 2.5 inch disc is generally sell retail slash online $25, $30 high quality four to four and a half inch sell for a hundred plus. So there you go. Um, yeah. If, if you can find your way into the market, I'm um, definitely profitable. Um, King of DIY, of course, did a video about how he was making, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars at one point breeding discus. Um, but also that he would never, ever go through that again. Um, so, you know, it's, it's ups and downs and it's different for everybody. Um, is there money to be made? Yes. Is there with most things? Yes. Uh, it kind of depends on what it is, where you are and who you are. What I would do is make sure you get some high quality discus because, yes. uh, you don't want something that has some bad DNA and then try to expect to make big money off of it. You know, uh, try like I got mine from uh fish keeper or uh, discus Hans. And I remember I paid $25 a piece. They were about a little bigger than a quarter. I got mm -hmm. them in Chicago years ago. And, uh, but those were some terrific discus. And I, I did it just for myself. I wasn't planning on selling any. I was working full time, didn't have time for that stuff. Yeah, Discus Hans is one of those names, though. Um, that you're, yeah, I, I didn't even know about Discus till I talked to the guy. Right. I, <laughs> I was looking for angels up in Chicago at the ACA. I think it was it was one of the big cyclic conventions, and I ran into him, and he's like, "Oh, I think you'd rather have these than angels." It's like, well, tell me about them. And he was like saying all, he was selling them to, him, you know, giving me the pitch. And then he gave me like a little poster. And that's how I knew that it was him years later because he gave me the posters. Nice. But uh, so cool that I was able to get those. And they were great fish. And they did like to enjoy watching TV and watching action and stuff like he said they would because they like to do, they're more of a social fish my green terrors that way he's kind of not in between but off to the side of me and the television and so he'll come up to the, and he'll sit there and stare at me and he'll turn and stare at the tv and um it's always funny to watch him candace's aquatics had asked uh, are there any fish i can have in a five gallon with a betta it's planted and there's a very good filter i would love bottom feeders but i'm open to any options that was the one you mentioned the um pygmy quarries for okay i was making sure because i saw it pop up a couple times um, another I didn't thing, know it was with a bed, uh, but the quarry should still be fine. Yep. Oh, go uh, ahead. 
Uh, Cleon Pleco would be an option for a bottom feeder. Uh, Cleon Pleco, stay small. People are going to flip that I just said to put a Cleon Pleco in a five gallon tank. They get three inches. You know, they max out about three inches. Um, and honestly, they don't swim around enough for that to be limiting to them. You're probably not going to see it much, if ever, if at all. I've lost them before under a leaf. Like I've gone to drain a tank and I'm like, oh, that's where that Pleco went. It was hiding under this piece of moss mat. Um, so yeah. It, if it's somewhere with a lot of light, like if it's at work and you're next to a window and you get lots of algae, you could have a auto cat or, you know, like three little autos in there. That'd be cute. Mm -hmm. Black Tetra. I have one Black Tetra. He's like a lone survivor of everything. He's super tough. And I have him now with my beta and he seems <coughs> super happy. He's too fast, you know, for the beta to get to him. Absolutely. Uh, I see a lot of conversation regarding salt. I must have mentioned, must have missed something, but there are oh, definitely differences was, between salts. Um, someone marine. asked about, uh, it was Egger somewhere. He asked about adding salt to every water change, and I wanted you to go through that one. I got the one. I, I touched on that one. Yeah, he oh. mentioned he adds it with every water change. Is that uh, good? And, I got that one. I didn't know if I'd missed something else, but there are definitely differences between uh, marine salt, aquarium salt, table salt. Um, check your salts. Yeah, I don't add a lot of salts unless I have to. But uh, it's and aquarium salt that I use most of the time. Well, we got the experts' opinions here. Uh, Kenny E. from Danikin Aquatics and Mrs. Fever both said they would um, leave most of the babies from Tanganyikans. And Kenny said they should be fine unless they're weak. There was, I would leave the fry with the adults. Um, this was in reference to the parasite promise. Uh, would leave the fry with the adults. They will not hurt them unless they are weak or bad fry. So there you go. Hey, that's awesome. And that's what I said. Hoot, hoot. But I'm not an expert. I'm just a schmuck. All right. I, I'm gonna get, I am going to get caught back up here. <clears throat> I don't know that. I don't think anybody is like s scheduled at nine o'clock these days. I'm thinking Griff is probably still on, but we're going to keep rocking and rolling for a little bit here. Uh, it's weird having a one hour Saturday versus an hour and a half Saturday. I'm definitely going to have to adjust to that because I'm not keeping it in the hour, but we'll get there. Well, if nobody ends at 930, you ought to just go to 930. Oh, yeah. We're definitely going to go a little bit longer. I, I haven't like, even gotten some of these. Well, we could. Absolutely could. Um, let see. Brand says, will putting blankets on my aquarium help uh, lighten the work on my heater? Yes, absolutely. It's going to help insulate it. Um, anytime that you um, add insulation, it's going to put less work on the heater. Um, lids help a lot. Yeah, lids are another huge one. If you don't have lids, start with lids. And then if, if for, I don't know if it's an emergency situation. I mean, I wouldn't think you'd want to have to regularly put blankets on your aquarium. Um, but in an instance that you need to keep that thing warm, blankets are definitely one of those things to have to put around them um, that will help insulate. If you're finding it's a, a common occurrence issue that it's just not staying warm enough and you're trying to help get it back up to temperature with blankets, I would just say go ahead and increase the size of your heater. Get a higher rated heater. Rolling through here. Uh, Angling and Aquatics, you are welcome. Medcal 74M, absolutely more than welcome. Glad to uh, help in any way that we can, or at least give it a go, right? And see, this is awesome. I want to point out, we mentioned aquatic aesthetics. We've got a, Aquatic Marine is my local fish store, and Aquatic Aesthetics is Ed's local fish store. Both of those are in East Tennessee. One is in Knoxville and one in Chattanooga. I highly recommend you check those guys out if you're in the area. Um, and I will say... Several people in here have, have made the trip, come in to check out Aquatic Marine. Um, it's worth the drive. It's worth the drive. Um, as is, of course, Aquatic Aesthetics with Rob. Yeah, I love for me going. People. I, I've had a couple of people are like, hey, I'm coming to the fish store. Can you want to, can you come down here? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I run down there and hang out with people and look at fish and then head home after they get done. Yeah, I've done the same thing at Aquatic Marine. Or, I mean, Aquatic Aesthetics. So... Well, I guess I've done it at Aquatic Marine also with our big meetup. <laughs> so, but, uh, 
Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Cool. And if anybody has tried to call me in the last 24 hours, I don't know, not to change the subject, but I just, my phone made a noise, so I checked. I still have no service from the thing that happened in Nashville yesterday. So I apologize, no texts or uh, phone calls, because the at t is down where I live. Sorry. And I, I will ask, because um, <clears throat> Engineer's about to beat people up, uh, please don't spam the chat with the same question. Um, yeah, we run behind because we like to give a decent answer. Um, if we just gave a yes, no, maybe, we could we could stay more in tune, but that, that wouldn't really help anything. Um, but for the sake of the mods, just give us a chance. We'll get to your question. It definitely helps if you put at Fish Room Fever. <laughs> And uh, then it highlights bright orange for me and I can see it pop out there. And that's generally what I stick to is anything that's highlighted. I try and catch the other stuff, but highlights always get my attention. Nathan Fishboy says, good day, everyone. How are you, Nathan? Uh, Fisherman Fever and Ed, here's a question for you about tannins. I heard you can use phosphorus flourish to get rid of tannins. Is that correct or is it false? Mm. That's not what I'm familiar with, um, just to be yeah, perfectly honest. Want. Um, and see, this is why I love doing this because we get to learn stuff too. Somebody in the chat will probably have an answer for this. Um, that is not a method that I am at all familiar with. I am going to do some research into it while I'm trying to get caught up here on the chat. Yeah, I'd like to um, know what's eating the tannins because I know charcoal, just basic charcoal, will even take some out. Yeah. But if you really want to get tannins out, the best way to do is water change. You know, just yep. literally remove them from the water. But or you can also boil your your uh, stuff. Boil it for a couple of minutes, and it'll look the water in the boiled stuff will look like tea. You pour it off, do it again. You can also do a, a sun bleaching. Like I've got some awesome chula wood. I could grab a piece. Let me grab it real quick. All righty. Um, Oh yeah, you go ahead and talk. And I'll I, so I've got a piece of driftwood I've had for well over a year now in a tank, um, but it's three foot long, so obviously it was not boiled, um, and it's still you know I'm still getting tannins out of it, and it still doesn't even necessarily want to sink. Uh, where did that go? But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that secret history living in your aquarium. He's around. He's probably gonna have an answer for that. That's awesome wood right there, Ed. Yeah. Hey, Larry and I I have two tanks right now. I wish I could hook up a camera, but one of them was left in a five gallon bucket in the sun for a week. No tannins whatsoever in that tank. One that came straight from the store and I stuck it in lots of tannins. So yeah, I got this at aquatic aesthetics. I love that. This is the last piece I have that I haven't dunked, but I, but it has been the sun bleached. Or so sun soaked, maybe you could mm -hmm. say. But uh yeah, I I don't like the super heavy tannins. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What no, were you gonna you're say? You're fine. Um I was just looking, Brian was mentioning just on really cold nights, um being able to wrap it up. And I understand, Brian, there are some restrictions on what you're able to do and what the, the parents allow and all that stuff. So yeah, if it's something that you just can't necessarily get a, a bigger heater and it's you know, just to here and there on really cold nights, absolutely. Wrap a blanket around it. That's definitely going to insulate and help. Uh, aquatic Marine says Aquatic Marine loves Fish Room Fever. Fish Room Fever loves Aquatic Marine. Kenny, brother, I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. I really do. Looking forward to seeing you soon. And thank you again for that $50 super sticker. Fantastic. Freaks threw down a $10 super chat. Hope you had a Merry Christmas, buddy. Um, and thank you very much for that. Finley and I got an FX6 for Christmas. Awesome. Says love it, and after an hour of pouting, um, so, so does Finley. Uh, was also shopping around and saw some exodons here in Omaha. Heavily considering them. Any advice on them? My advice would be, if you've got some exodons, uh, exodon paradoxus or bucktooth tetras, um, is what we're talking about. Get them. They are awesome fish. Absolutely love them. Um, they are just super, super cool fish. Um, I would they say are. give them plenty of room. Make sure you put a lid on there. They are crazy jumpers. Um, not so much just swimming around and jumping, but like when they get spooked or at feeding time, um, there's a lot of jumping. So make sure you've got a lid on those bad boys. Definitely. 
Um, even as someone that has open top tanks, I refuse to leave that tank uncovered just because I've seen how high those guys can jump. Um, and the last thing I need is for one of the kids to, you know, run through the hallway and spook them and those go jumping out. And then I've got to send a message to LRB going, Hey, you know, those exodons I got from you. Yeah. One of them jumped. Uh, but yeah, I would say go for it. I think you're really going to enjoy them. Um, and congratulations on the, the FX six for Christmas. I'm glad Finley also took to it. Finally, um, you know, puffers are pouty fish. So, or they can be anyway. So I'm, I'm glad the, the pouting is done. Thank you again for the super chat. Uh, in terms of, only thing I would say is give them a, and this goes for pretty much any fish, but try and give them a decent kind of natural environment. And I know you will, like I, I've seen your tanks. I enjoy your channel. Um, I know that you'll go through and you'll give them an awesome setup. So I didn't really go into it at first, but, um, they definitely appreciate a nice planted tank and I'll leave it at that. And I appreciate that again. Fantastic freaks. While you're on the subject of the Exodons, uh, John from select pet says fish room fever. Will Exodons take a chunk of finger. They haven't so far. They haven't so far. I don't know. Maybe I need to do a video on that. A feeding. Yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have to do a, we'll, we'll do a bite test video. I'll poke my finger at, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I am going to do a video on that. I will. I will. Um, I want to get them in this tank first. They're moving into here. There's a lot of stuff going on that I need to get done um, that right now I can't. Of course, Mrs. Fever, um, you know, she tore her Achilles tendon. Um, so it's kind of like me by myself and a whole bunch of tanks to move around. Uh, it's just not a good time in general at the moment, trying to get things done and built and moved. Um, but I'm wanting to get them into this tank and then I'll, you'll start seeing them in some videos. I've got a couple of videos planned for the x -Dons. It's like pet. How are you? John says, uh, I guess it's good. Fish room fever. Didn't need an eye patch tonight too. Yes. The eye is doing much better after I got the medicated drops. I appreciate that. My friend, uh, everything is going well. A brand asking or saying I have been successful in breeding guppies and sword tails. And that is awesome. Um, I always love, when people could get into the hobby and have success with those things, it makes it that much more enjoyable. And congratulations on that brand. Me too. Uh, so John, or excuse me, I mixed two names there. I was looking at John Cox and Jeff Statler at the same time. Jeff Statler says, what if your mystery snail clutches never hatch any tips? Um, generally I found when my clutches aren't hatching, it's because they're too dry. I guess is the best way to put it. They're not getting enough moisture on them. Um, and they dry out, but that's the only time I've ever really had issues with clutches not hatching. So what I do, uh, for my clutches, so of course I've got lids over them and you could do something as easily as just splashing some aquarium water up onto them once a day. I've done that and had success with it and ensuring that they don't dry out too much. Um, the other thing I like to do if possible is to run an air stone below them so that as the bubbles are hitting the surface and they're popping, it's keeping some moisture on them. Uh, but that's more than likely the, the reason you're having the hatches or the clutches not hatching is because they're getting dried out. Um, so I would look into that. And then, I mean, that's probably going to solve your problem right there. there. There may be some other things in terms of fertility and whatnot, but that's probably why. And that's the issue I've had in the past. Hey, Steel Angus says, hello, Fish River Fever Chattanooga. Ed, what's up? How's it going, Steel? I hope you're doing well. Rolling through here. Main Sales First of Finn says, uh, Fish Room Fever and Ed, hi, you guys. How is everyone tonight? Hey, Jess, Main Sales for and Finn's. I hope you're doing well. Um, that would be, Brian, an awesome channel for you to check out. Uh, Jess has bettas and does breeding and all that stuff. So go check out Main Sales First and Finn's. Furloughs Aquatics with the $10 super sticker with the, I can't do it because my headset's on, but the hat turn hippo. I appreciate that, Eric. Always good to see you. And thank you very much, my friend. Um, I need to talk to you, Eric. I need to get, to get together with you sometime. I've got an idea that I want to run by you. So shoot Look, me a message at some point when you're not busy. Oh, there we go. We're the nerd <laughs> brothers now. We are. We're the nerd brothers. <laughs> uh, but thank you for that. Further. I really do appreciate it. Moonstone Aquatics with $20 Super Chat says, Merry Christmas, Fish Fam, Kim Moonstone. Thank you for that. I really, really do appreciate it. And I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Um, 
thank you for everything. Uh, Moonstone's one of those people that's been around for quite a while, as a lot of you have. Um, it's just very, very awesome, nice person. I get messages from her just saying, hey, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Um, just making sure everything's okay. And I appreciate that. I really do, um, as do I from the rest of you that reach out to me from time to time just to touch base and make sure life hasn't beat me up just yet. So thank you for that. And I really do appreciate the super chat as well. Make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. Looking for highlighted questions because I'm behind by about 13 minutes. So I'm just grabbing the highlighted ones. How hard is it to breed clown plecos? Any thoughts? I've not had any luck. Um, from what I understand, they need a lot more flow than what I'm getting to them. And I'm not willing to put the time into setting up a tank to do it. Uh, that being said, I've had five of them together for a year now with no babies. And I've bred out several different types of plecos. Um, but I've not put a ton into it. So I would say mm -hmm. harder, harder than a bristle nose, easier than the zebra. Do you need to borrow my water thing? I shouldn't know. It's just, I'm not going to put a, I'm not going to set up a tank specifically for breeding them. I don't think right now um, with specific parameters. I've got other things I've got to work on. All right. Grabbing the highlighted stuff. Scroll back up here because it jumped on me. I do appreciate that. All right, that's where I was, and it's like Pet says, just do a two-plus hour one. It's been a while since we've done a long one like that. Uh, Paul Saris, Fisher Fever, Discus Hans, Myrtle Beach Discus, Jack Watley, and Kenny's Discus are all good sources for quality discus. Absolutely, those are all phenomenal names when it comes to discus, and I highly recommend... Yeah, that's a good one to take a screenshot if you're thinking about this, guess. It is, because it's also got great information directly below it from Kenny at Danikin Aquatics. Uh, says, I would buy discus from a local discus breeder. That way, hopefully, you are close to the water parameters, and it will give you a great shot at keeping them healthy. I'm also not a fan of shipping discus. Yes, I could agree with that as well, um, and especially when it comes to water parameters, because for so many years, discus were that really hard fish to keep. Um, but if you can get them locally with similar water parameters to what you've got, that's going to make, make life so much easier on you. Rolling through here. All right. Oh, I'm clicking the wrong buttons. I'm pulling a punchy paints and I'm pushing buttons here. Let's not do that. Uh -oh. I don't know if Pam's still listening or not. I hope she was. I hate to pick on people when they're not listening. Aquatic Marine has already out of here. I'll have to send him text, but I uh, said, <laughs> good night. I'm an old. I am old and an LFS owner. Happy New Year. Um, oh, that's awesome. Kenny, Happy New Year. I know you watch the replays a lot. He sent me pictures oh, before. Oh, he, he'll go home after um, after uh, closing the store down, and he'll sit and he'll watch our live streams and eat dinner sometimes. He's like, this is what I do. And I'm like, I appreciate it, man. I do. That's cool. I, I didn't know if he said it was Kenny. I thought it was oh, sorry, something else. Yeah. I was like, oh, another fish guy. That's super cool. The other Kenny. Um, all right, highlighted stuff here. Brian says, Love the stickers, by the way. I'm glad you do. Um, anybody that wants stickers, send me an email fishroomfever at gmail.com or send me your address, please. Um, and I will get you some stickers mailed out. I see the select pet asking about the chunk out of the finger. We'll have to give it a try at some point. Mains Tales Fur and Finn says, uh, I got two pea puffers. Congratulations, those guys are so cute. Uh, Jess, I hope you enjoy them. I love those little guys. I'd like to set up uh, a tank for them. You know that tall tank I have that's a 40 tall? Yeah. It's like a square tall. I'd like to do some type of middle island thing with a lot of little caves and stuff for them to go into. Right. And uh, just have pea puffers swimming around it. That would be Re awesome. Rebecca asks if I'm going to be going on afterwards. I only do that on Thursday night. Yeah. So we're kind of um, expanding or extending today. Um, to keep on keeping on here. Mike's Aquatics and Things throwing the $3 super sticker. The, the thumbs up is top. I appreciate that, Mike. Thank you very much. Um, another awesome. There are so many awesome channels in here. I always feel bad um, because uh, I, I could never get through them all. But another great guy. I really enjoy what you do, Mike. Um, and thank you for the super sticker, my friend. Uh, ta -da, let's see here. Best no filter fish. I'm going to refer you back up to the conversation about that previously, especially the comment from Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. Um, he had about a dozen things that um, he recommended that were all fantastic recommendations. 
Select Pet hey. says, uh, or okay. Oh, oh, I was just gonna say he works in a shop that's uh, got it's a lot of plants and stuff that kind of are, is that type of style. So he really knows his stuff when it comes to that type of thing. Dragon there says, "Select they're worse than piranhas about biting you." Yeah, I've kind of avoided. I didn't want to find out. So the other day, I had to get in there and move some stuff around, and uh, I was very, very quick on getting out of their way. Rolling through here, um, you, but you really should get an exit on Scar right next to the. Yeah, was, I almost had Puffer Scar. <laughs> uh, now I need a Puffer um, Scar, so we're just gonna have to. That might know. just take the finger off, though. We might scare people out of fish keeping. I come up with this mangled hand and I'm missing missing digits. And so what happened to you? I, I keep fish in aquariums. <laughs> I have fish room fever. <laughs> yeah, I have fish room fever. Oh, goodness. Oh, gosh. All right. Uh, Rebecca Jackson says, any stocking ideas for a 29 to 40 gallon uh, with a bully angel? Oh, <sighs> that... That limits a lot of things if you've got a bully. Um, you could do, if you're looking to try and go a community vibe um, or a community theme, you could still possibly do it, but you're going to have to go with fast things. You're going to have to go with some tetras that are fast um, or some fish that are, you know, have some speed to them that can get away from the angel. Um, or Nora's. Yeah. Corey's. You, That's Corey's. Um, you know, you could get Pleco's. You know, Ed's thing is Corey's, my thing is Pleco's. Not that they're mutually exclusive. Um, oh, yeah. But <sighs> with it being a bully, it's hard to. I know. Get, I hate getting know. bully angels. Yeah. And that was so Trying to find him a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, you're definitely not going to want anything with a lot of finage. Um, one, because that's a lot of surface area to be attacked and destroyed. And two, because that's generally going to slow the fish down. If it's got a whole lot of finish, they typically don't swim as fast. Case in point, like your guppies with massive tails versus guppies with smaller tails. Um, I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of different ways See, to go with that. I mean, that's one that honestly yeah, yeah. I could I could probably throw, you know, three dozen muck guppies in there. And then there'd be so many of them everywhere that that angel fish isn't going to know what to do. Um, yeah, you just give up. Yeah. You know, dithers is an option to try and distribute that aggression. Uh, really depends on. I've got tinfoil barbs. They're a nice fish. They're a great dither fish. They don't attack anybody. The problem is they will mess up some plants. They, you know, I never have any duckweed in that tank because he eats all the duckweed, but he eats everything. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, but he's, they're super nice. So a big old, uh, well, you can get them small, but uh, oh gosh, the hat's like pushing my glasses into my eyes. It's forcing me to see. Um, but I don't know. Maybe a tinfoil bar might be a good big fish. Yeah. There you go. That, that's generally my, my idea is going to be to stick with some larger fish that Angel can't bully. Um, Dragon Lair says, I'll breed some clowns for you, James. I need a few more, though. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We'll definitely figure something out. And where was it? Uh, Crystal Jones says, hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas. Stay strong and healthy. Thank you, Crystal. I appreciate that. Thought I was caught up. Maybe I was not. You're all through here. Uh, John Cox says, James, I'll try and reach out to you on Facebook. Absolutely. Um, hit me up on Messenger anytime. I and mean, that, that's open to everybody. You know, it, I try and get back to everyone as quick as I can. But if you've got questions or stuff or you want to, you know, you're like, hey, you know, I have I have this idea. Or I have this question or, you know, I want to do this collaboration. Shoot me a message. John's cool. See, Fantastic Freaks says, send me or Chattanooga Ed your address. I have something for you both. Um, I'll send you my address. Oh. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was trying to figure that out. I think you need both our addresses or one of our addresses. Um, I thought I did that. I got you. Yeah, sorry. sorry. I flipped that and read it back. Yeah, we'll get your address, you. buddy. I was supposed to ask you for your address. I think I have it somewhere, but I forgot it. And I finally figured out how to get to his house without 
GPS. So, right. And yeah. I do always have the PO box address in the description of every video. So if it's something that uh, is PO box friendly, you're always welcome to send stuff there. Um, but yeah, I can, I can get you my home address. I, I, I know you well enough and trust you well enough to give you my home address. <laughs> well, Peplin Creek Aquatics, thank you for fertilizing the stream with that dollar super sticker. I appreciate it, Peplin. It's good to see you, buddy. James, we should plan on trying to go visit him since my uncle lives in that town too. That would be awesome. My, my uncle has a Winchester that he wants to give me and it'd be nice to also see him and we could go to the Omaha Zoo. I'll take you to Pizza King. <laughs> I heard they have good steaks. They do. The yeah. best. Best prime rib, I think, in the Midwest. And then, uh, you know, maybe we could go there and then head on back. Select Pet wants me to do uh, petting the Exodons on Saturday Night Live stream. And then Zan replying with that one's a members only stream for sure. <laughs> Zana do do with the uh, dollar do do. Uh, adding some more fertilizer. I appreciate that, Xanadu. And I'm glad that those uh, fish are doing well for you and breeding out and making babies. I was, uh, that was kind of like right at the, the crash of the United States postal system, you know, holiday season stuff. So I'm glad that the fish came in well and that they're doing phenomenally well for you. And thank you for the super sticker, my friend. All right. We're going to give it a couple more minutes here. I am at the bottom think I caught the highlighted stuff. If you have anything you want to throw in here last minute, please feel free to do so. If I missed anything, which I'm sure I have, I apologize. Uh, Mace just for and Finn says fish room fever. I went uh, went to make, I think is what it's supposed to be, a video at my local aquarium. They put on a Christmas program. Hopefully it will be out late tonight having trouble uploading it. I look forward to it. That sounds awesome. Um, and yeah, hopefully you can get it uploaded. I know there have been technical difficulties here and there and everywhere. Uh, sometimes it just takes time for the darn things to get uploaded. All right. I'm going to just kind of scroll up a little bit, see if there's anything that I did miss for sure. But I am looking. don't see anything at the bottom. We have a couple more minutes. That will be an hour and a half. And I think we will probably go over to that. We'll, we'll just we'll keep the hour and a half, um, but we're going to do it from eight to nine 30 instead of seven 30 to nine. Uh, again, we did that, uh, in partnership, if you will, with secret history living in your aquarium. Uh, that way he could stream from seven o'clock to eight o'clock. Um, and we weren't cutting off, uh, any of his stream. Brian's asking if I do salt water, I have one salt water tank that currently only has cleanup crew in it. So crabs and snails and stuff. Um, I will be moving a lot of that rock into a smaller tank and doing a small reef tank, nano reef. Um, <clears throat> I just don't have the time, capacity, nor funding, nor brain power to get big into salt water again. Um, <laughs> it, it can definitely get in depth if you let it, and I tend to let it. I'm going to pop over here. I want to see if Griff is still alive. And I also want to pull this up and say some thank yous because I do really appreciate you all. I don't know how many people we got. We got 108 people watching, 109 thumbs ups. You all are amazing and greatly appreciated. I certainly hope you got some sort of value, even if it was just a giggle or a chuckle, um, either entertainment or education. Hopefully a little bit of both. Uh, let's see. Uh, the zoo. Ooh, zoos and I love going to zoos and aquariums. I yeah, do, I do, I do. Maybe we'll maybe we could plan it this week. We go to the ACA. We could go to the St. Louis Zoo for free, and then we'll pay the twenty five bucks to get into the Omaha Zoo. Uh, but the Omaha Zoo has it's got some neat little domes, like it's all indoor stuff, so it's mm -hmm. kind of neat. And my favorite place is like it's a bayou. You walk through like on these old planks, and there's gators in the water, but it's all nighttime lit. I love it. That sounds awesome. So we're going to have to have a, uh, we're going to have to do that. Still Angus says, what is the best bristlenose pleco to breed for profit? Super red long fins question mark. Um, again, that's, that kind of plays back into where you're at. Um, but of course, you know, with the, the internet that can mix things up a bit, I would definitely say you're going to do better to get into like, like you mentioned the super red long fins, um, you know, maybe a blue eyed lemon, 
Uh, of course, Green Dragons. People really like the Green Dragons. Um, it took me a year and a half to get the normal. I just wanted a plain old brown bristles. <laughs> it took me forever to find. But nobody wants them, so I guess it's a bad thing. You're also picky. <laughs> yeah, I want the normal. <laughs> he, he wants their uh, their bristles to look a certain way. Oh, I got babies. They don't even have bristles yet. I know. <laughs> I, I, I tried to give Ed a bristle nose pleco many times over the past year, and he's like, no. It I'm, is true. No, no. Well, <laughs> yeah, that is true. I, I'm not, and I plan on giving most of my bristles nose back to him. Well, and he didn't give them to me. Haley gave them to me. Yeah. But uh, I just want one that I can name Cthulhu. There you go. I do not have green dragons. Um, that's one of the things that, I will eventually expand Plecos. Right now I'm working with the Endler and Guppy um, expansion, I guess is the best word for it. Um, you know, getting more lines in here. And mostly that that all started because of going to LRB's house and going, oh my God, I want everything. Um, but yeah, I do have plans to get more strains of Plecos going. Um, but I would definitely go along with your thought process that you originally had. Uh, look for something that's a little bit different versus just your standard bristle nose. You know, maybe a long fin super red or a long fin blue eyed lemon. Um, and you can short short fin also is an option. Um, but since you mentioned the long fin, I was kind of sticking with that. Let me burn through here and do this real quick. Pull this up so I could say some thank yous once again. Um. I got lost somewhere in that. I got lost Thank there. I'm not even going to try and catch up to that conversation just because I'm going to look like a fool trying to interject into something that has nothing to do with me. Uh, Dragon Lair says, I'll say you my bristle nose. He looks like Cthulhu, uh, however you spell it. That's awesome. Let me get this thing to work here. Yeah, so I'm a huge fan of blue-eyed lemons. And not just because I have them. Uh, Steel Angus said blue-eyed lemons are nice. I just I think they're really pretty little fish. Um, all right. Why is that not updating? Huh. YouTube's being a booger right now. I'm going to try and get you this know, to update I here. just made a new guppy that is crazy cool looking, James. You did? Uh, I, yeah, it's brand new. I've got like these pond guppies or tub guppies that are all crazy, all different things. And I've been slowly working on them. And I had a mature adult. I was wondering if he had a uh, fin rot mm -hmm. because I've got these uh, Cobra striped guppies that I really like that are rainbow colored. Yeah. But this one also has the blue tail of mm -hmm. my Moscow's at the Ooh. end. So it's rainbow and then a dark blue, but it curves like a, I've never seen it before, but it's like, oh. like a curvy. And I, I pulled him and I put him down here and now I got to try to find some girls that'll go well with them. And I'm going to do these two tanks down there and try to get some more of these guys. Cause super cool. They sound like it. I, I, I want to see these things cause they sound really awesome. <laughs> Uh, still asking when I'm shipping. Uh, I will not be shipping fish and plants again until it warms up a little bit. Um, and the postal service is kind of back on schedule. Things got real crazy. I mean, it's taken two weeks for stickers to get to people. Um, you know, I sent, I sent a package express um, and it was still two plus days on an express package. So, um, and, and uh, it's, my first, so my first thing is the safety of the fish, and my second thing is the customers being happy. Um, I hate when a fish shows up not healthy, um, which we did have happen there at the end, and that's why I like cut the shipping because up until that point, we'd had pretty much 100% um, survival rate, everything was alive and well, it was going out, um, and then things went south rather quickly, and I was like, nope, shut it down here's refunds for everybody. We're, we're done. Um, so once I feel that it is safe for the fish um, and that the customers will be happy with what they get and everything will be healthy, then I will start shipping again. 
uh, in the meantime, I'm putting that effort into doing lots of breeding, uh, you know, increasing the number of fish that I have available in the springtime when we open back up so I can do a big grand opening sale, I guess, if you will. Um, and also working on, like Ed mentioned, a couple of my own lines, trying to get those worked out and ready. So I think that's going to be awesome. And I do want to say thank you for um, considering shopping at fishroomfever.com. I appreciate that. I do. I do. I would like to order five more of those matte things. Oh, maybe six. Yeah. Because I absolutely love those things. They, they're growing great. I, I, I love them. Yeah, we... um. Those were popular. And see, that's the thing. I know now exactly what, you know, what people really liked. Um, and that's that's helping me with ensuring that I get the proper stuff ready. Uh, Zana Dudu says, uh, USPS sucks right now. Uh, fish were awesome. Glad I got them before the shutdown or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's the biggest thing. Believe me, I would love to be selling fish right now. I could definitely use the money. Um not going to risk fish and I'm not going to make people upset. Uh, that's my biggest thing. Uh, I, I am a hundred percent all about uh, value and customer service. And of course, making sure fish are not being murderified, but let me run through here, do this real quick. A huge, huge thank you to Mike's aquatics and things. Priscilla MK, John McKenzie, Priscilla MK, again, a fishy 64, Sean Chadwick, Danica aquatics, Christine Gauthier, it had to have jumped and I missed some of these and I apologize, but this is why I go through at the end and read them again, just to be sure. Cause I'm sorry. I missed what I missed. Uh, aquatic Marine, fantastic freaks, furloughs, aquatics, moonstone aquatics, Mike's aquatics and things again, Peplin Creek aquatics and Xanadu do. I do appreciate you all very, very much for the super chat members. I appreciate you all. Um, I've got something coming up. I just hope you get the notification for it. Um, it may have something to do with me mentioning the local fish store owner doing a, a live stream there. Um, you'll see. Hopefully, YouTube will get you the notification out. I appreciate you, members, subscribers, lurkers, listeners, questioners, commentators. Uh, best fish for a one gallon. I'm going to say no fish, maybe some shrimp. How about a female betta if you have to do something? I mean... Are you are you the one that I'm not getting Lisa from KG Tropicals on my butt? You go yeah. right ahead. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Throw a snail in there. <laughs> right. Throw a snail. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there we go. That wraps it up. If I missed your questions, I'm sorry. Rep replay crew, you guys are crazy, and I love you for it. I appreciate that, and I enjoy going back and answering the comments. I'm going to turn it over to Ed for his farewell. We will be back Thursday after KG Tropicals. Um, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to talk about. You'll just have to wait and see. And I appreciate that you'll do that. Yeah, just for the facts, I don't use anything smaller than a five-gallon. I will be going to three three and a half gallon for uh, fry, guppy fry. But... I won't do anything. And as soon as they're big enough to go back with their mom and dads, they will. So that's going to even be short lived. And that'll be on a sump system. So stay away from one gallon tanks. But don't be afraid to get your hands wet. Keep those tanks clean, guys. Thank you for showing up. And until next time, keep your fish healthy. Keep yourselves healthy. Catch yourself a little fish room fever. Love you guys. Thank you.